We have eight cameras. We have the Canon camera over here. We have the Sony camera here. So you see how I can operate this JVC camera. We have the PC optics camera. We have the Minray camera. We have the Marshall camera over here. And then we have the Avonic camera and we have the Everett camera. Let's say, um, take four cameras like these. So now we have a bunch of PC cameras selected along five cameras here and I'm moving them synchronously, okay? PTC Extreme is Skyhoy's top of the line PTC controller and this is perfect for many cameras or if you want to have direct access to settings and preset record functions. It also does have a zoom rocker and with that you can engage in a two-hand PTC control experience or you can decide to dedicate the zoom rocker to moving a horizontal slider for instance and keep the zoom of the cameras on the joystick. Generally, the PC Extreme is a premium product and it also has a Hall Effect joystick, which is really nice to work with. And all over the place, you find crisp OLED displays like you do on most of our controllers. They tell you what buttons and knobs do. And that's super useful for the flexibility this controller has to offer. You can add virtually unlimited number of cameras and you can even mix different models and brands without the loss of the deep integration that we always provide with the cameras. And the web UI we have and the network discovery services, they make this process super easy, but you still have the power, scalability, and all the advanced features at hand. So in this video, we have set out to work with eight different cameras, and the PTC Extreme has eight cameras on the camera selector. Notice that all of these cameras are different brands and different models. And what we shall see is that, as I just explained, we will have access to individual custom features on these cameras because every one of these brands is awesome in and of themselves. They have different advantages. Canon has its take on PTC control. Sony is a different one. We have Average here. We have PTC Optics, Minray. We have JVC, Avonic, and Marshall cameras. They are all having great individual features that they are proud of and that you probably looked at when you purchased that camera. So what you want is the PTC Extreme to support that camera on every dimension it has to offer and the reasons why you bought it. So this is how we make universal controllers. It's quite different from the general universal controller you find on the market because that would usually be concerned with standardized features and you won't benefit from what I'm about to show you. So that's really nice to know when you buy a Skyhoy controller, you can kind of rest assured that when new PTC models come around, this boy is gonna support those things that were your reason to buy that particular camera. This is the Canon camera we currently have selected and obviously I can do all the standard Canon stuff. We have actually a lot of videos that highlights this already. We love these cameras, they are new on the market and they made it really well for a first edition. So with the Canon camera, we have quite an extensive menu actually. So obviously in the home screen, and the home screen is kind of where you have the most important features that you are likely to wanna use um, and have at your fingertips during operation of a camera. So you find for instance, the white balance mode is broken out here on the home screen. You have red and, and, and blue gain, and those are shifts. So uh, if you see me turn them, you can see that I'm still painting the picture while with the Kelvin knob here, I have actually a fixed, uh, we can go to the color there, you can see that the Kelvin degrees is um, 4650 Kelvin. But despite of that, with the red gain, I can shift it a little bit to the side. And that is true regardless of which mode I'm choosing over here, the red gain shift is going to affect it. Now I just pressed and hold to reset. That's generally the case for all of these cameras and so on. But if you look at the Canon camera, I, I won't go into the details with the features, just browse through the menu so you kind of get an idea about the scope of what we're doing. And here we have the many white balance settings. We have auto uh, exposure gamma limit. We have uh, iris f stop, the um, manual focus speed, uh, focus position and so on broken out right here. And in the exposure, menu, there's auto iris, uh, on off, you can switch to manual here, gain mode, um, auto gain limit. Actually, you find that on the homepage as well, but in the exposure, this is really where it belongs. So that's kind of a point that the home screen does have redundancy. Let's just quickly look at the other cameras, because if I go to Sony, you see the home screen is kind of different, 
but there is some thematic um, replication here. For instance, the red and the blue gain is kept on the same places because it exists in the Sony camera. So we chose to also put it in here. If we go back to the Canon, you can see there is a knob called automatic exposure gain limit. And on the Sony camera, it's called gain. So gain is found on this knob in many cases. In other words, when we are putting these configurations together, which of course you can change if you want, but these are the defaults out of the box. We actually, across these models, put a lot of effort into making sure the configurations are kind of predictable, that the same patterns are applied. And uh, that's really, really great to see across so many different brands and models in broadcast that they become usable together because the similarities involved in the configurations that our engineering team uh, has applied. So um, the home screen is kind of different between each of these cameras, but they have similarities in how they are constructed. Back to the Canon camera, let's just quickly look at the color um, menu where we have uh, white balance settings and uh, more advanced stuff going on. We have a page with details, sharpness uh, level, limit, black gamma level point and range, uh, noise reduction mode. As an example, you can see it, it, it's a toggle between auto and manual. And if we're in a manual, we can adjust the noise reduction settings here to uh, some level. Moving on to matrix, this is the color matrix. We have focus in here and even on the Canon camera, which is quite an extensive configuration, the shift key is enabled and giving you access to features related to presets in the camera and also system settings, which again has a, a bunch of uh, things associated with it. Now, um, let's move on to the Sony because we have already seen the home screen, which I get to if I press this uh, button on the top, by the way. But if I go to exposure, you see full auto exposure, uh, or basically exposure mode is set up here. That's the standard Visca um, exposure mode um, setting. We have iris. If we are in, um, in manual mode, we can adjust that. We have gain, gain limit, shutter speed. Moving on to color, we see the white balance mode, red and blue gain, gamma mode, and so on. So you see already here a pattern, but in this case, with the Visca camera, we have um, either there are less things supported in the camera or our configuration is less ambitious. I can't tell you exactly what it is. I believe in this case, we could have actually taken more features from this particular Sony camera out in the menu, but it's also likely that this is what the BRC X400 has to offer, and we would need to go to larger Sony models like the amazing BRC X1000 or H800 um, top of the line models, which has also such as color matrix that we find on the Canon. But the point is if we move on to the next camera, again, you see it's the same menu structure here, but if we go to, let's say the, uh, the color menu, then here we have white balance mode for the JVC camera. We have something called FAW. It's probably full automatic white balance. Um, what do I know? AWVB auto white balance, then we have a fixed 3200 Kelvin and 5600 Kelvin. We have manual white balance mode and that's what the JVC camera has to offer. So let's look at the Sony camera once again, has different set of modes and that's what I mean. We have integrated the exact white balance settings available in the Sony camera because we took the time to read the manual and put them in. Moving on to PTC optics, it has a different set. This is a really good example of exactly what it is we are doing at Skahoy when we put all this engineering time into supporting different brands and models. You see it's different every single time. Now we're on the Minray camera here. And I move on to the Marshall camera once again. We have uh, some of them are similar, but some of them are definitely different. Going on to the Avonic camera has apparently a list of actual Kelvin degrees associated here. Now, uh, let's move on or back here. So that, that gives you an idea for each of these cameras that we have these individual features supported. Now um, we can click through these menus and then you can see how it will look for each of these. Uh, we just took the white balance as an example, but they are really um, different, but also alike. Let's have some PC movement. We have eight cameras. We have the Canon camera over here. We have the Sony camera here. So you see how I can operate this JVC camera. We have the PC optics camera. We have the Minray camera, we have the Marshall camera over here, and then we have the Avonic camera, and we have the Everett camera. Yay. 
All right, so no surprise, I can operate these cameras. Even the cheapest controller could do that. But as you have just seen, I went through menus where you saw how we integrated all the specific parameters of these cameras individually to give you the maximum flexibility with your PC Extreme. What I want to do now is to explain what you can also do. Namely, you can pull together cameras despite them being different models. Then if they are on the same device core, like Visca cameras, you can actually select them along with each other. So you see, I can select the Sony camera here. Let's just do that. The Canon camera is not a Visca camera, but I could select the Sony and the JVC together. It means if I move the joystick, both of these cameras are going to move. Maybe you won't do that, except it's just super fun to show this to people because if you, let's say, um, take four cameras like these. So now we have a bunch of PC cameras selected along five cameras here and I'm moving them synchronously. Okay, now this could actually be useful because it allows you, if you go into the menus, you can see the menus are now saying mod, that means multiple different values. So they do not have the same value. No surprise, because these are different models. If you have had the same model of these cameras, it would actually tell you that if the value was the same for those um, five uh, similar modules, then it would have told you that in the display. And that could be a nice way for you to set the same settings across these cameras. So that's one thing you could do that would be useful. Another thing is that you could recall presets like a homing position. So let's just see how that could work. Um, we move now all the cameras in one direction. Let's call that the home direction. I would press and hold on the preset key and now for five cameras, it's storing this as preset number 10. And now I'm moving them all away from this position, pressing and holding on nine, and it's now stored in this. So we will now see as I'm pressing this preset number 10, we have five cameras moving to that preset position. And as I'm pressing preset number nine, they move back again. So imagine if you had a way like a reset switch that would apply to all of your PC cameras at once using this feature. So that could come in really handy and that's a standard feature on Skyhawk controllers if the cameras you set up belongs to the same device core, this is how it will work. Before we end the video, we also need to look at how easy this would be to set up. Reactor is the software that runs this whole show. I will show you also how you can make it a little bigger. So I assume you will now be able to clearly read and see how we have added the eight different camera models here. And if you wanted to add more, it would simply be a matter of entering into the device uh, adding dialog where you can either find cameras on the network by network search, you can add them manually, or you could even you could even pick them from the existing so-called device collection. So in here, if you wanted one camera to appear a few extra times on your camera selector, it would be possible by simply selecting here. And notice as I just did this, the Sony camera now appears twice on the controller. And if I select it, it's also selected twice. But this is, uh, it could actually be kind of useful if you have multiple pages of cameras and you still always want access to uh, the same camera somewhere. So let me just uh, quickly show you this if I, uh, add a few uh, extra cameras here. Then just play along with me and say this is this um, different cameras. Then assuming the Sony camera should actually be found on the second position here everywhere. Then if I move it uh, down here and I go to the next page, you see the Sony camera is found on the exact same location. So it, it does make sense that you can add the same camera multiple times to your camera selector. So this um, camera selector as you're paging will show it in the same position. Other than that, we have um, cameras added super easily here. We Over here, we have the cameras in the form of device cores divided by the Visca PTC device core. And at the bottom, we have the Canon device core. You see all of these are lovelyly connected and they have a IP address. With, they have um, ways you can manage where the device core is running from. These are all, um, no wait, not all of it is advanced. Basically, if you click the camera model, it's it's really important that you know the IP address of your devices. That's an important requirement. And um, we invite you to select or apply structured IP addresses that you can look up in a spreadsheet somewhere. Even though we have network discovery, it's still a good idea to know the IP address of your, your things. But um, it's all looking like green light here. It's all connected, that's great. If we go into the camera selector here, we have uh, the ability to actually choose different profiles, it means that uh, by time or by your own initiative, it's possible to develop different configurations to have slightly different arrangement of functions on the buttons and knobs. 
and that's uh, what you choose inside here in these drop down boxes. You can also change the camera name. So for instance, if I just know this by name Canon, I could change the name of the first camera and you'll see um, as I exit this and go to the first page, it now says Canon right there. So those are a few things uh, I want to mention. We also have tally integration in the camera selector. We also have routing functionality. So when you press and select the camera, it will bring that camera up on the monitor in front of you. And that usually requires interaction with the video router or an auxiliary output or a video switch or whatever. And those are managed by these two last fields. So it's super easy to add a camera. If you want to set it up with uh, more advanced features, it's only a click away in this very nice table where there are fields for those extra things. And that includes these two buttons down here that allow you to set up how your routing trigger is working. If you, if you did that, you'll see that we have out of the box support for ATEM switches on AUX, program, preview, ADA, Kumo routers, video hubs, optocore, video, uh, vMix uh, routing uh, to output preview and uh, active. So those are things that indicates for you how much additional functionality you can add in by uh, these out-of-the-box configuration snippets, in a sense that you can choose in Reactor. Huge upgrade from Unisketch, so much easier to manage and so well thought through and so much more powerful. So we are really happy to bring the, the Blue Pill and Unisketch platform out for all your Unisketch users out there and all those of you who are about to buy the new Blue Pill Inside hardware from Skyhoy. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you'll uh, consider following us on social media. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is where we share all the latest and greatest technology from Skyhoy with you, so you will always be in touch.